Good evening, so glad you have joined us. We all look forward to sharing this time together. I actually despise the fact that we cannot be together. We have been deprived of one of the greatest blessings of life, and that is our fellowship with others. It has been a crazy reminder that we are not in control of anything. Actually, Pastor Mike will be sharing a message in a little while about that very topic. And we also look forward to Robert Canning, as well as Sandra leading us in worship. We pray that this time will be a huge blessing to each one of us. So sit back and relax and enjoy this time together. God bless you.
Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We are so glad that you've taken the time to be with us this evening. And I'm not sure if you've been watching the news or not, but uh, just in case you haven't, let me bring you up to speed on what's happening. We are in a pandemic. Not sure if you knew that or not, but it's true. And uh, probably for all of you out there who are control freaks, uh, this time is probably, probably really frustrating for you because we've kind of lost our sense of control, haven't we? You know, before this all happened, we had control of where we wanted to go. Uh, we've lost that. That's gone. We had uh, control of who we wanted to be with. Well, that's gone. We had, uh, we had control of um, what restaurant we wanted to eat at. Well, that's gone. We had control of our education. Well, that's gone and changed, hasn't it? And um, in times like this, we realize that we don't have control. Things are out of control and we can't change it. We can't do anything about it really at all. And what I want to do is, is look into the word of God in Mark chapter four. And it's about a situation where the disciples, they found themselves in a situation where, where they had absolutely zero control. All right. And it says this in uh, Mark chapter four, verse 35, it says, as evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross to the other side of the lake. And so they took Jesus in the boat and they started out leaving the crowds behind, although other boats had followed. But soon a fierce storm came up. Highways were breaking into the boat and it began to fill up with water. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. The disciples woke him up shouting, teacher, don't you care that we're gonna drown? When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and he said to the water, silence, be still. And suddenly, suddenly, suddenly the wind stopped and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? The disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man, they asked each other, that even the wind and waves obey him. The disciples found themselves in a, in a situation, like I said, where they had absolutely no control and they did what any good follower of Jesus would do. They, they panicked. They just, they, they just panicked. And, and panic means uncontrollable fear or anxiety. And this is exactly how the disciples were feeling. They were just panicking. You know, on my keys here, um, on, my, on my key fob, I've got, I've got a button there that uh, it's, it's, it's a panic button. I can press it. And so if I'm, if I'm ever in a situation where I don't know what to do or I'm scared or maybe someone is trying to break in, I can hit that panic uh, button and the alarms will sound on the car. So you use that if you're in a situation where you don't know what to do, you hit the panic button. Now, you've probably heard of the panic room as well. And it's kind of the same thing. It's a, it's a fortified room that's in your house so that if there's ever a situation where you're in danger, maybe someone's breaking in or there's a tornado or a storm, people build these panic rooms in their house. So it's a place of refuge where they can run to and they call it the panic room. So here are the disciples. They're in a situation. They're in a storm. Jesus is sleeping. And they are in 100% panic mode. I mean, I think if the disciples had a, had, a, had a panic button, they'd be pressing it. I think if they had a panic room, they'd be running to that as fast as they could. And talk about frustrating for the disciples. I mean, think about it. Here they are. They think they're going to die. They think they're going to drown. And, uh, and here's Jesus snoozing up at the back of the boat. Here he is having a power nap. I mean, think about it. The disciples are scared. They don't know what to do. And they're looking to Jesus for help. And it kind of looks like he's just resting and it looks like he doesn't care. It looks like what's happening in their lives really don't matter. And they're probably thinking, Jesus, come on, wake up. Show us some love. Show us some compassion. Show us some help. And the storm that we find ourselves in today is a pandemic storm, isn't it? I mean, you think about, think about the word pandemic. If you, if you look at this word, the beginning, you know, it, it starts with pan and it ends with ick. <laughs> you put that together, it's panic. And it seems like a lot of people in the world right now are in panic mode during this 
pandemic. And that's exactly where the disciples found themselves in a situation that they could not change, in a situation that they couldn't control. And like I said, from the very beginning, we are in a situation right now that we have absolutely no control over. And can I just tell you this one thing? Don't panic. Don't panic. And I know that there's many of you who may be watching uh, this evening who feel just like the disciples felt. And maybe you're frustrated with Jesus because you know what? We're in this pandemic storm and, and we're calling out and, and maybe you're calling to Jesus and, and you just feel like there's no response. It, it kind of seems like he's asleep and we assume that he doesn't care. I wanna share two quick points with you. Two things that I want you to kind of take away from our time together this evening. As a disciple of Jesus, here's, here's, here's point number one. As a disciple of Jesus, listen, you are going to be okay. Don't panic, you're gonna be okay. Why? Because Jesus has not abandoned us. He's in the boat with us and you don't have to feel like you're alone. Understand this, is that Jesus didn't put them in the storm to test them, but he used the storm to teach them. See, we're not being tested by God, but he can take what we're going through right now and he can use it as an opportunity to teach us. And maybe during this time, if we would open up our hearts and open up our minds to who God is and what he wants to do in our, in our lives, maybe we can learn to trust him a bit more. Maybe we can learn to be patient a bit more. Maybe we can learn what it is to wait on God. Maybe we can learn what it means to be still and know that he is God. Maybe we can learn how to lean on him. The disciples learned those things. They learned to trust him. And they were taught by Jesus. I just love this scripture, Colossians 1, 16 to 17 says this. For by him, all things were created, things in heaven and on earth. Okay, we're talking about Jesus here. Visible and in invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. Get this. He is before all things and in him, in Jesus, all things hold together. Jesus is holding everything together. So when you feel like the world is out of control and like you have no control and things are crazy in this world, hold on to that truth. It's gonna be okay. You're gonna be okay. Why? Because Jesus is holding everything together. He still holds the world in his hands. And not only are you going to be okay, here's point number two. The church is going to be just fine, okay? Now, some people might be thinking, well, you know, Oh, I just, I just wish we, we could all get together. I, I, I wish that we could come together as a, as a church. And, and, and some people are thinking, well, how in the world is the church ever gonna survive this? She's gone, she's gone, she's gone. How are we, going, how are we ever going to recover from this when we can't get together? I hear people say, oh, I just, I just miss church so much. But what is the church? What does that mean? The church is not defined by buildings or is not defined by pews or pulpits. The church is its people. That's you and that's me. We are the church. So let me just tell you that whether we can gather together in a building or not, the church will be just fine. The Bible says in Matthew 16 and 18, it says, and I tell you, you are Peter. This is Jesus talking to Peter. And I tell you, you are Peter and on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. The church is gonna be fine. We're gonna be okay. Even hell cannot prevail against the church. And if hell cannot prevail against the church, if hell can't do it, a pandemic surely can't. And when this is all over, the church will still be here. Jesus will still have his people. God will still be on the throne. The church will still be strong. And who knows, we may even be stronger once all of this is over and behind us. Let me end with this. In Matthew 14, the Bible tells us of another storm that the disciples were in. And, and at this time, Jesus wasn't with them. He sent them out 
to go fishing and they would typically do that at night and the disciples were fishing. It was late at night, but three o'clock in the morning, the Bible tells us. And the winds picked up, the waves got higher. And once again, the disciples were in panic mode. And this is the time where they saw Jesus walking out and Jesus saw them from the shore and he walked out on the water towards them in the storm. And Peter, in faith, stepped out and miraculously walked on the water towards Jesus. And as he got to Jesus, he became distracted by the things that were happening around him. He got, he got overwhelmed with fear. And at that moment, he panicked. He went into panic mode. He took his eyes off Jesus and he began to sink. And I just love what the word of God tells us is that as soon as he began to sink, he called it to Jesus. And the word of God says this, and immediately, okay, immediately, Jesus reached out to him and picked him up. That's a beautiful story, a beautiful account of how Jesus is so close to us in the middle of our storm that when we call out to him, he can reach out to us immediately. So if you're like Peter and you're in panic mode and you're scared and you're fearful and you're nervous, you're anxious, all you got to do, all you got to do, wherever you are right now, even in your home or wherever, all you need to do is ask Jesus, is to reach out to him. And as soon as you call it to Jesus, just like in the word of God, immediately, I believe, immediately Jesus will reach out to you right where you are because he is already so close to us. And he will lift us up out of fear. He will lift us up out of panic. He will lift us up out of anxiety. As we finish up this evening, I wanna encourage you to open up your heart to what God wants to do in your life. And we're gonna pray together. And at this time, I'm gonna ask Warren Strong to come and he's gonna lead us in prayer. And I encourage you wherever you are today, let's all pray together. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray this day by your precious Holy Spirit that you would invade the homes of those that hear this today, that you would put back into their hands a sense of control, that you would take from them every fear and anxiety, that you, O oh God, as prophesied by ancients of old, would today, in the very homes that we hear and receive this, empower them again to be your servants, Encourage them, those that, oh God, uh, uh, have been discouraged, those that have felt lonely. Encourage them today. And Father, we pray in the name above every other name, by the blood that covers the doorpost of everyone that names your name, that no sickness, no disease shall enter the doors of those homes. But you, oh God, will stand on guard for your children and everyone that names your name. And those, oh God, that may hear this today, that don't know you, remember, he was smitten, he was bruised for you, and he took your iniquities, every one, on that cross. We thank you and give you all the glory for this today, in the mighty name of Jesus, amen. How great the chasm that lay between us, how high the In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my So great a mercy, what heart 
step down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has
Thank you, Robert and Sandra, for leading us in worship. Beautiful atmosphere, and we appreciate it so much. Thank you, Pastor Mike, for your inspiring message. It's an encouragement to our hearts this evening. And we appreciate everyone involved. We thank you so much for the work that goes on behind the scenes. It's always a blessing and a privilege. And we look forward to coming together again next week. Until then, stay focused on the one who is in control. And let his peace fill your heart. May God bless you. <laughs>